Hello, sweet souls. It's DTO in the flow. And today I get to interview a high school friend of mine, Rachel Peters. And Rachel's work and purpose is to guide you towards cultivating resilience, adaptivity, and ease. Hmm, let's just pause right there for a second. Resilience, adaptivity, and ease. Those are so important right now more than ever as we're living in these unprecedented times with fear, anxiety, the unknown. For us to be at ease and create stillness, safety, peace within our hearts matters more than ever. And for adaptivity, for us to shift, for us to focus and redirect our energy. Right? What is it that we can become during these trying times on our planet? Right? What is it that's possible for us to overcome and to flow and shift? And so Rachel weaves ancient wisdom of yoga, Ayurveda, and modern habit science into your modern fast-paced life, which has become a little more of a slow-paced, medium-paced life. Nevertheless, we still have that vibration of go, go, go. So Rachel will speak more into that later. Uh, she's been leading others in this inner and outer journey towards easeful living and the embodiment of ease as an Ayurvedic life coach and yoga teacher. So without further ado, I will bring on fellow Muskie from Muscatine, Rachel Peters. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for Good having me. You. So Welcome. fun. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Here we are. I know. It's really an honor to be having this conversation with you after all these years, right? Yeah. And someone posted, I can't see who the user is, but they wrote, Oh, love it. Hi, Musky. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So we're live streaming on a multitude of platforms right now, and including our Muscatine High School class of 1993 hangout and reunions. <laughs> So I want to see who wrote that. Oh, yeah. So Rachel Bailey, Kelly wrote that, actually. Oh, nice. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. What's up? We had a conversation before we went live, and your name came up naturally. <laughs> All the love and interconnectedness. And um, yeah, it's really extraordinary how you and I live in different states right now and how we both have this common background. So before we get into the five questions, I want to kind of presence like how we know each other. Mm -hmm. And the first way that I found out who you and your family are is because <laughs> in fifth grade, I made the choice to pick an instrument. Anyone that's a musician out there or dabbled in being a musician, um, attempted to play an instrument at some point, uh, which my challenge is to revisit that creativity within you. Mm. And so my mom drives me over to a house. It's like, oh, you chose the drum as your instrument, right? It's just a snare drum, right? And we're going to go pick it up at the Peters. And I was like, oh, who are the Peters? I've never met them before. And I get there and, you know, we test out the drum. It had this like black case. You open it up, set it up. <laughs> and, you know, this kid, I'm like starting to jam out a little bit. And, and then there's this um, book that came along with the drum. And that's your brother, Ben Peters. So yeah. big shout out to your brother. <laughs> oh, Ben. The totally. drum never took for him. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I took it from him. And for you. It was meant for you the whole time. It was all meant for you. Totally. And back then, I'm sure it was like 25 bucks or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, of course, that drum became a part of my drum set, which then I, you know, was classically trained in piano. And then I got in the guitar. And now I'm like multi instrumental. And if, as you and I both know, I'm out there creating music specifically for yeah. yoga, breath work, meditation. And, you know, anyone interested in hearing my music, you can go to dtomusic.com and what I'm a part of is an amazing group of individuals and for Buddha music group and our intention is raising the vibrations of the planet through art and music. And none of it would have happened if it weren't for Ben. 
<laughs> so cool. <laughs> All the like the, the weaving of time and space and, you know, reversing. And that's totally it. how, like if I have a vision of you in high school, it is totally you on the drums. Yes. That's my, yeah. that's like the vision. <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> uh, we got some really cool comments coming in from our uh, class. For some reason, the names aren't popping up. This is awesome. Way to go, class. <laughs> Someone's doing some LOL. Rach, you're a babe lady. <laughs> oh, that's Kelly. Uh, <laughs> I love you, Kelly. <laughs> love you, Kelly. Come on. Come on now. Yeah, we have a lot of people uh, streaming. So let's say hi to all of our uh, Muscatine friends real fast because uh, we have Wade, we have Angie. Rachel, nice. big shout out to everyone there. So fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, those are our roots. That's where we came from. And that's like a part of how we were able to cultivate a sense of presence, awareness, connection to ourselves, to community, mm -hmm. to a culture of being a muskie. And also what I really have always reflected on is how nature was always right there present for us. And I was in Boy Scouts and, you know, there was, you know, Bobcat Den and all these locations and trails and overnight camping where it'd just be nature and the trees. And of course, many people that may not know, um, we're talking about a city, Muscatine, Iowa, and it's right <laughs> along the Mississippi River geographically. So there's this whole like life on the river. Our claim to fame is Mark Twain lived there at one point. And I go back often. My mom's still there and plenty of friends are still there. And it's it's really great to like honor our roots and our mm -hmm. upbringing. And what's wonderful about you, Rachel, is you go deeper beyond the roots of here in this lifetime, right? We're going back to India and we're going back to the Eastern wisdom and the philosophies of life that a lot of us in the West haven't had access to right mm -hmm. and so we get to you know honor what's present for our you know experiences and let's put it some oh, here's our friends <laughs> so good so good yeah <laughs> we're gonna have to live stream for our uh, muscatine <laughs> high school people more often more <laughs> often yeah yeah i think yeah if, if we weren't uh you know known back in high school now we'll just like give everyone the medicine and the magic of the Eastern philosophies and wisdom and like, wait, what's Ayurvedic mean? What's yeah. yoga? What's, you know, so that's really our approach, Rachel. And I love how grounded and rooted you are, not only as mm -hmm. an instructor, but a mother, as a friend, and as someone that is bridging that East and West um, philosophy of life. That's what mm -hmm. we get to do. And my analogy is, you know, we have our left brain that's more analytical and uh, then we have a right brain that's the creative brain and without mm -hmm. both parts of our mind to come together we wouldn't have the level of consciousness and awareness and presence right. and i feel like you're only half living sometimes at least i personally i can only speak for my own journey when i only knew one way of living and yeah when I went to Japan and several people, big shout out to Muskeen High School, we had a sister city school, Ichikawa Daima in Japan, and we got to travel there. And guess what I did when I was there? I was playing in the marching band. Ben Peters. <laughs> 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 I don't think I've ever met your brother either. <laughs> we'll have to share this with him. I know. I can't wait. I can't wait. He's so popular right now. <laughs> yeah. He has nothing over the COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Right. And yeah, so I got to go to Japan. I got to be like in this extraordinary experience of Eastern culture and everything was like mind blowing and heart opening mm -hmm. where the food, the culture, the way people greet each other, the sense of community. Um, it was more of a we philosophy than a me philosophy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the traveling that um, you've been able to have in your lifetime, I know you and I were both born in Muscatine General Hospital. Yeah. And then you got to live in Belgium for mm -hmm. many years. Um, so, yeah, let's let's share a little bit about like that international global experience for you and how that brought a level of, um, you know, what perspective did you get? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that I actually just went back for the first time with my mom in the in the fall in September. We went back to the school that I went to and I lived in Belgium and it was so fun because there was a part of us that were we were we kept being like this is remember when, remember when and and sort of mm. reframing even of this like let's talk about how our lives actually changed from this moment in time there yeah. as like, how was that moment in time a catalyst actually for a different kind of trajectory of our lives, yeah. which really was cool because we were not no longer kind of living in the past, but really setting ourselves up for really what was next and, and honoring that time. And it blew my mind because I was living in Muscatine, Iowa, and my dad was like, came home one day and said, hey, we're moving to Belgium. And my brother and I are like, Ben, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, where's that? <laughs> so I can remember specifically like getting the map out on the floor and getting down on the floor and really even identifying the geographical location. Mm. And then my whole world opened up going from just small town to you know, it's not like I lived in a big town when I was there, but it was just a bigger life experience. I went to an international mm. school. So there was people from all over the world. Belgium is a hub. Brussels is just a hub of international vitality. Mm. And it was a powerful, powerful experience of just like what I got to see and witness. And then, and then also like how that shifted my trajectory really was in this like deep seated like desire for uh, movement across landscapes mm. and across borders wow. and recognizing the power of like different languages and, and sort of the, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't an obstacle that I couldn't speak the same language as somebody else. I still was able to find connection. Mm. So what part is so we're showing everyone the map? Uh, yeah, so we we lived, our house was in Waterloo, which is sort of just outside of Brussels. And the school that I went to was actually um, in in Brussels. I don't know if you can even, Waterloo, there it is. Ookla, it's sort of like the big, where it says Belgium is just to the, just to the west right there, Waterloo. Got it. Yeah, I have a big. Yeah, um, that's great. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty powerful to go back there. Actually, you know, to go forward there, to sort of spiral <laughs> forward there with my mom and to have a, an experience there as an adult with her. It was really, really magical. Mm, that's powerful. That's wonderful because I actually have a friend, uh, Yasmin, and she's in Himalaya's Embody Secret Sauce Mastermind program. And I know that you both are called and we're, you know, channeling that word in body yeah, that really I love is that. powerful so that makes <laughs> makes me smile when i saw your website and yaz is amazing because you know she goes back and forth to belgium as well and oh. like to have that multicultural um, community and to perceive as i was saying earlier about like you have the eastern and the western yeah. philosophies and similar to just you know going outside of those I would call borders like an illusion sometimes. Like we feel mm -hmm. like, oh, I can't go there because I don't have this or that. I think I read once that only 30% of people in the United States have a passport, which is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you get to go somewhere else, like it really creates, um, like it was a, a platform, a ground, like home base. In addition to, you, you can have a home away from home. That's what's great. And of yeah. course, then you get to a larger like, expansion of like well our home is earth right and then we're in the cosmos and we're in the universe and you know so then you get to like a larger picture and that was exactly mm -hmm. what happened for me when i went to japan it was like i felt like i was on a different planet a different mm -hmm. world and then from there it's like well, wait a minute okay this is connected there and then when i started traveling and so far i've been to like 13 countries i'm like oh i get it. it's almost like my analogy is if you've moved to a new town or city and you're going to a certain area of town, then the next day, another area, another area, all of a sudden, like you're going to drive the path and you're going like, oh, wait, that's connected there. And now all oh, like it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, I would probably say that that's a great metaphor and analogy for um, the practice of yoga. So yeah. let's jump into question number one, which is tell us about your personal journey with yoga and why is it important to you? Yeah, uh, yoga really came to my, into my life sort of 
it sort of like was dr dr dribbled, you know, sort of like dripped, sort of dripped its way in for a few years before I actually started drinking from the hose. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that it, uh, I knew that it existed and that it, that it was super powerful. And it wasn't until I think I was um, graduated from college and I actually, I think in college I was on a backpacking trip and we did sun salutations was the first time I ever Ooh. experienced Ooh. it. Right. So there was this link for me in terms of like being in nature and moving my body and doing that without um, even um, a mirror, for example. I mean, a lot of yoga studios now have mirrors, nothing against that. But what I found is that uh, I moved west when I was 22 and I connected with people who were backpacking and moving their bodies across landscapes again. And we would do yoga. So I started learning it and I started taking classes and what I found was myself in this way that I had never experienced myself. I'd been an athlete my whole life. I started with like dance. I did all the like young dance classes and then I played all the sports. So it was very, my family's just very sort of hand-eye coordination, sort of athletic uh, oriented. I was very much, I felt like I was very much in my body, but I, but I wasn't in a sort of whole way. Mm. So there was always a disconnect. And so I, I remember another musky, Liz Wall and I, Elizabeth mm. Altemeyer now, she and I, we did a 10 day backpacking trip. Mm. And on that 10 day backpacking trip, I like fell in love with myself for the first time because there was no mirror and there was nothing else. And so, and what I found was when I, when I started to do yoga and I started to practice yoga and roll out my mat and connect my breath with my body, I was accessing that same part of myself that I would experience in nature. So sort of that flow state, right? Mm. Where there's that just like perfect balance between just like effort and ability and and just really uh, a time for me to really listen to my body. And so it was, it was really, I think it was when I was 22 and I met a teacher. I met someone who I really resonated with here in Prescott and she continues to be a mentor and teacher for me, Christina Sell. So anybody mm -hmm. check out Christina Sell Yoga. She's amazing. She just wrote another book. She wrote a couple books and one of the books um, that she wrote was really rooted in body image. And so um, she interviewed me for that. And so it, it, it brought up all of these pieces of like really learn like through the practice of yoga and putting my body into different shapes and running energy through my body. Like I, I started to cultivate a kind of self love that I had never experienced before that I didn't, I wasn't actually waiting for something to come from the outside. It was actually being cultivated from the inside. Mm. And then that, you know, became, I sort of talk about yoga on the mat being sort of a gateway drug for me. <laughs> it was the <laughs> portal. It was a portal for me. It continues to be a portal yeah. into, into who I really am. Like without the shiny object syndrome, without the distractions of what is really going on in the world. But if I can roll out my mat and make shapes with my body and move energy in, in the directionality of my heart and um, something else happens. Mm, absolutely. And truly, and I'll speak from my own practice of yoga and asanas. And if for me, it was you know, I was sharing with you uh, before we went live about how I had a really bad hip injury yeah. in playing football in yeah. high school. And, you know, Western medicine and physical therapy, they had some like machine and some creams or rubbing on me and all this. No one ever told me to like get in pigeon position. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this might help. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it was like stretch a little bit, go to side to side. It was like this whole like surface approach. And as I shared with you and I've shared with many people about my transformation, not only, you know, from the mental uh, flexibility, balance, um, expansion that you get to have, it's that physical self where all of a sudden it's self-care. Like I get yeah. to nourish my temple. Like yeah. life is happening 
on a complex level within us, right? And I did my yoga teacher training as well. And you get into the anatomy and you get into, yeah. you know, parasympathetic system. Then you get into like your nervous system, muscular system, skeletal system, right? Like you have all these structures and parts and pieces. It's a, it's a miraculous gift that we're here and, yeah. and able to really experience life in the universe as we get to. And then when you deepen that practice, you're touching upon like unexplored territory for a lot of us, I would say in Western cultures, like yeah. we're not always going, we're like, it's like in Vedic philosophy, it's encouraged the question. Like mm -hmm. the, actually the best students for a, a mentor, a guru is to develop like the questions that mm -hmm. are going to allow us to think and process and go deep and yeah. to explore and that for me personally, when I started to feel the benefits from a physical standpoint, then I started to feel into my heart space. And if anyone knows about the main seven energy centers or chakras, mm -hmm. you know, we get to activate all parts and pieces of who we are and explore moving that. And so I, I love how you say put our body in shape. So I haven't heard anyone speak into an asana practice like that and it's so true like it makes it so fun for all ages just like right in a shape right <laughs> what's how's it feel when i'm in this shape <laughs> yeah, let's get in a shape <laughs> that's awesome so what i'm hearing from you is you um and liz which i'm grateful to say is like all of you are just soul sisters you know just such a blessing that we get to have decades of time that we've known each other and evolved and grown and so you get this activation right like mm -hmm. i'm in love with who i am i'm mm -hmm. me i'm present i'm aware i'm awake mm -hmm. i'm alive the next step that you took is question two so what inspired you to teach well my teacher said i'm going away i've been i've been invited to teach <laughs> Over here, I need someone who's going to sub my class. Will you sub for me? Because this was sort of before a time when you needed a certification even to teach, right? Yeah. So this is 20 years ago, over 20 mm. years ago. Wow. And I was like, okay. I mean, yeah, like I come to all your classes and sure. <laughs> like I've been taking mental notes. I think. <laughs> yeah. And I, <laughs> and so. Uh, so I did, I did, I, I did that and I did it um, very, with a lot of hesitancy, but also with a deep sense of gratitude that she actually chose me as someone to take, mm -hmm. to step into her seat in that way. So that was really big for me. And I, I grew up in the Anasara yoga method. Mm, okay. So from the early days of Anasara yoga, so it was years and years and years and thousands and thousands of hours of training prior to certification. So it wasn't a 200 hour training. I think I ended up with 15 or 1600 hours prior to actual certification. Mm. So it was longer, different. It was very much um, sort of modeled after the Iyengar method, which is where John Friend had come from, you know, and that sort of a method still exists without his leadership now. Yes. And so it was, it was a long time for me just to take the seat of the student and to really cultivate what it meant to have these qualities of adhikara, right? The qualities of studentship. And so I spent years studying, studying um, alignment. I really love, I'm like align, like aligned movement, aligned life. Right. A like when we really get ourselves into alignment with something greater, like it, it, tra it transpires, it, it moves into all areas of our lives. And so I felt that and I continued to um, study philosophy with different teachers. I studied with uh, Paul Muller Ortega for a long time and I continue. Um, I did meditation trainings and um, philosophy trainings with him for a long time. Mm. And it was it was interesting for me to take the seat of the to take the seat of the teacher. It felt like a really big deal. It still does. Yeah. But there's a certain emphasis, I think, of like I really feel, and you talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but the bridge, right? The like bridging, mm -hmm. the bringing together of things. And I feel like one of my aspects of my own purpose in life or my dharma now is that I'm this conduit. I think of myself as a conduit. I'm a lifelong learner. 
I just am like, I want to be devouring um, information, not for knowing, but for a deeper sense of wisdom and application and integration into my life. Like it's not enough to know it. I believe that for all of us, it's like, it's not enough to know. I don't want to be book smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't do me any good. <laughs> When it really comes down to it, like I need, like, I want it to be, that's the embody part for me is like, I want yeah. it to be embodied. I want it, I want to be living the thing. And so taking the seat of the teacher was a long, was a long road. I taught for a long time before I was actually certified because of the nature of that method. You had to be teaching in order to get certified. And, mm -hmm. um, and it was always like, I was all, and still I, I get, nervous in this anticipation mm -hmm. it's the same kind of anticipation i'm a rafter i'm a river girl i'm a river girl i grew up on yeah, the river fine. and so i've continued to find rivers right some of them a little bit more mm -hmm. turbulent than others but i like the, on the colorado river there's a huge rapid it's called lava and you <laughs> get out of your boat and you watch it and you look at it and you try to figure out what's your line right yep. through this thing and I think about it all the time. It's like this uh, on any sort of river experience. It's like, it's like life. Yeah. Find the current, stay in the current, right? Like be in the current and it's, you're going to get jostled around mm -hmm. and there has to be this, for me, there was always this emphasis of like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but a deep, a deep seated uh, appreciation and respect for the power of water. Mm. And that I feel like is the thing that with teaching, it's just like, wow, this is so not about me because I love for me. And so for me, it's like to take the seat of the teacher is like, wow, if all of these people didn't show up, like there's no need for a teacher. Right. Like yeah. the people who show up actually create. So for me, it's always been this really cool dialogue. Like I really love the dialogue that happens in teaching where it's like a watching and responding where I love to have a plan. And then I love to wing it after that mm -hmm. based on what the needs are of the collective group and of the individuals that showed up. Mm. Wow. That's a perfect segue into question three. Like oh, what makes yeah. your <laughs> sessions unique in classes? So what I'm hearing is based on the energy, possibly the level of knowledge for those students, you get to show up as a teacher in a specific way. And I'm sure you've yeah. gotten praise and testimonials from people. And I was on your website. I saw tons of glorious testimonials. So what is it that defines Rachel Peters? And what do you feel people um, would say is the unique quality of your offerings? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the feedback that I get from people is that I'm accessible. I'm really grounded. Mm -hmm. I have this thing that I say almost every time that I teach, which is something that I learned from my teacher, but is like, I take yoga really seriously, but I don't have to take myself super seriously along the way. Mm -hmm. So a kind of lightness, right? Yeah. So just like cultivating, like really inviting all the elements to show up when I show up of like, there needs to be some fluidity, but there also needs to be some steadiness and a kind of clarity. So like the fire is there and then sort of the movement of, um, of the body. And, you know, one of the things that I love to do is weave together the philosophy of the heart with the movement of the body because to me, it's just like, so what? Why should I straighten my arm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's just like, <laughs> yeah. if we can actually, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, or my leg, you're like, why should I do pigeon? Like, it's what's the big deal? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's just like, what's yeah. the big deal? And so, kind yeah. of also just like teaching in that vein of, mm. of uh, the power behind. So, I love the, I, I love weaving in of a sophisticated sequence of poses mm. that build on each other and that have a conversation with one another that open the body and the breath and then weaving in the philosophy really of, of yoga and where it comes from. Because to me, it's like a real deep respect mm. for where these teachings come from and just really how they've completely altered my own life. And then sharing that through the, 
through the practice of, of heart and of really like caring. I think that's one thing that I, I just get accolades for people appreciate just a, a level of care. That's not coddling. Right. Mm. It's like yeah. being seen. It's like not scripted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the term you used earlier, which a lot of our, um, community members here in San Diego speak into a lot is called the flow state. Yeah. So what does that mean to you and how do you create that? And before you answer, I want to put up a quote that you sent me. Yeah. The so asana is not, yeah, the asana is not the yoga. It is the residue the asana leaves in your minds and bodies and hearts that is the yoga. Judith Lassiter. Mm. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, the the beauty of even the word asana, like once I started studying philosophy and sacred text, that one of the most beautiful translations that I've ever heard about the of the word asana is to take the seat of the self. Mm -hmm. And in meditation and meditation practitioners, they call the asana the piece of fabric in which they sit upon. That's the asana for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's the sort of like fabric of who we are. And I think mm -hmm. in terms of the, you know, Ayurveda, which is such a part of my evolution, right? So like yoga being the gateway into meditation and then into Ayurveda, because it's like, how does all of this really come alive? Yes. And one of the words for health in, in um, Sanskrit and used specifically, you know, oftentimes in Ayurveda is this word svasta. Mm -hmm. And it means, again, it's like to take, to take the seat of yourself. It's like to, that's health. It's not a particular body type. It's yeah. not sculpted biceps. That's not the, that's not the definition, right? And so there's this piece of like, when we really take the seat of who we are, then we thrive. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. And I feel recently like, more people are aware of the term dharma yeah and the definition that um one of my teachers have said is dharma is basically like that like the seed as you're speaking into is without that essential ingredient if that is not a part of you anymore then you're off your dharma you're not right. like it's the dharma is like the essence of you and especially as you said earlier like when you're in alignment and um, Shannon has extraordinary words to say about who you are. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> Peters is the best. She brings you to yourself through listening, through guidance, through knowledge. She neither pushes you nor leads you, but walks along with you on your own personal journey. You do the work. She provides resources. I'm thankful she's been with me Aww. on my path. Oh, Thank my you, gosh. Shannon. We got to screenshot that Aww. one. <laughs> 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 so Great awesome. idea. yeah and if anyone's watching on the live stream feel free to comment we'll put your <laughs> post down and yeah it's wonderful and that's like that's truly that's the nectar right that's what we get as teachers and people that uh, we're students and teachers at once yeah right this teacher and the student within it's like yeah always if it wasn't for my studentship i wouldn't be a teacher there's yes. no, there's sort of no point. <laughs> right. And then you being a teacher, you get to go deeper into your knowledge. Yeah. This is Shannon mentioned, um, yeah. like now your guidance and your ability to, you know, just be the example and to walk the path and to realize, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. And for us, yeah. I feel as yogis to be comfortable with the unknown is relevant to what's happening right now on our planet. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's one of the things too, I think with a yoga practice is that it cultivates a kind of capacity for expansion, right? So there's constantly this contra contraction and expansion that happens mm -hmm. in the physical body, whether we think of it as like our muscular energy and how strong we are or how flexible and fluid we might be able to show up. Yeah. And those two things are constantly happening. They're happening in the microcosm of who we are and they're happening in the world all the time. And can, do we actually have the capacity? And sometimes we actually have to pull in, which I think is the invitation right now. Mm -hmm. And that can be really uncomfortable yes. to turn in, 
right? But that's also the the practice of the yogi is like if without the turning in, then there's there you can't actually move beyond. And I mean, I could go on and on about that. It's mm-hmm. so powerful right now in terms of the the cycle we're in. Totally, and that's you know perfect for what we're going to bring up here with question four is like what practice is most important during this cycle? Yeah. Right. I have like a, I have like a list. I mean, one of the things in Ayurveda is, you know, daily rhythm. And so just the, the recognition of the rhythm and leading, letting nature lead the way. And I think, um, you know, for me personally at this particular phase, I think it, I think it, it's got to be hands down uh, my meditation practice mm. for me. And I think that the meditation practice can come more easily or more readily or more accessible when we first move our body with our breath to just sort of move the, you know, as the yogis would say, the vrittis or the, the, the pulsation even of the, of the mind to clear some of that so that we can sit with ourselves Because what I've noticed over and over and over again in the last week, but definitely since a week ago, Tuesday, right? You and I were going to see each other at the Sedona Yoga Festival. Yes. And then that was sort of the shift. I think it was Wednesday that started to happen. But Tuesday, I really started to kind of go deeper into what was really going on and Mm. the effect and impact or, you know, of the whole thing. And I found myself, I'd listened to some podcasts, I dropped into some of the resources related, you know, in the news, and I found myself in this sort of heightened uh, vibration. And I was like, my nervous system needed me to stop. Mm, And so I I put everything aside. And I was like, Okay, I'm gonna just draw the line. This is the curfew. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) Put put the devices aside roll out the yoga mat. I think I did 15 minutes of just really basic movement of my body with my breath. And then I sat with myself for the same amount of time. And it was like, oh, right. And just to be in that experience of like, what's really going on for me right now? Yeah. Not to say that because I, I really believe in you, you mentioned this earlier, which is so eloquently, you know, the me and we experience you had when we were, when you were in Japan, mm-hmm. because I think so often this idea of self-care is thought of as being selfish. Yes. And I believe, and it's kind of back to like, even what you're doing in the world, Dave, it's like the personal leads to the planetary. Right. So the personal practices that we have right now have an effect on a collective consciousness. I believe that Mm -hmm. certainly because it shifted even me doing that shifted the vibe of my house Mm. and of the kinds of conversations that I started having with friends and reaching out to friends. And it's like we have the ability to influence and impact the people that we're around based on what we're thinking and what we believe to be true and what we want to vision, I think, into the future. Hmm. Wow, that's powerful. So those people that are listening right now, um, when you say meditation, and again, I was speaking earlier about, you know, we're a couple Midwestern kids. Yeah. (laughs) Are are, are just like... (laughs) the river experiences for you where we're just like immersed we're in it and if we fly out of the boat we fly out and if we <laughs> we're in we're in and and we're just gonna go for it and jump into and immerse ourselves into the well of ancient wisdom and practices and possibilities and you know when things have been going on um in our own personal and i love how you said personal to the planetary and that that micro to the macro and when there is you know it's like we have the plant kingdom we have the animal kingdom and they're complementary to one another Mm -hmm. and when we have ignored certain texts certain advice wisdom you know even our grandparents told us eat your veggies right (laughs) so and now there's nutritional science that show <laughs> that 
you actually increase <laughs> your immune system, which right now with this virus happening, what do you superpower do you need? A strong mm -hmm. immune system. Yeah. So Ayurvedic goes into that deeper as well. And I love how really the theme I'm recognizing that's unfolding in this right now for us is like creating opportunities for new perspectives whether mm -hmm. you live in belgium for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. whether you're, you get on your yoga mat and have shapes in your body that are way different than you've ever thought of whether you're going to create some symptomatology you have a cough you have a sore throat you have mm -hmm. a headache you turn to ayurvedic it doesn't have to be pop a pill right you mm -hmm. could you know there are reasons in absolute necessity sometimes why western medicine is required Absolutely. and it's the preventative yeah. and i really feel that this time for us and i interviewed a dear friend of mine andrew belinsky the other day and he said the one word that's been showing up for him he does uh, men's work is grounding mm -hmm. and for us to have that presence and yeah. self-care and now how do we prepare and how do we um, prevent whatever could be coming, right? Mm -hmm. As this COVID nineteen is going around our globe, yeah, it's and that's like it's a reverse engineer. Like we live in a country; those people, I know, many people are live streaming from different countries right now. But in the United States, it seems like I'm going to generalize the culture. It's like we don't recall something until it's done some harm to someone, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like they'll create some. I don't know, like a carrier for a baby and then like, but then there's some like problem with it, but then they don't fix it unless there's an injury or unfortunately sometimes a death, right? We're like the, the reactive world in general, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about, Hey, let's test this. Let's pause. <laughs> let's like work through some prototypes and sort it out. And we'll, you know, we'll launch it like a year from now, but we're going to do multiple tests and we're going to try it out and make sure. It's usually like greed. We're just going to get it to the market. We're just going to get this thing out there. I got to mm -hmm. make money. I got this pressure. I have all these bright, shiny things, as you said earlier. Right? I got to pay these things off. I'm in debt. I got at least. So then the overall, as you said, like the micro is connected to the macro consciousness. Mm -hmm. So when there's this rush and this hurry, all of a sudden it's like <laughs> the world is saying, all right, let's pause. Let's yeah. stop. Let's ground. Let's go within let's um, approach practices um, in our life. And so going back to my original intention of sharing that with you is meditation. Like for, yeah. like my mom's, you know, the pastor of a, a church, small town in Muscatine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's Judeo-Christian and a lot of people in North America, um, you know, I, I don't know all the percentages and statistics, but it's a high percentage of people that are taught that it's prayer. So yeah. my question to anyone out there and to you specifically is what is the distinction or do you mm -hmm. feel like there's almost like um, an overlapping of what prayer and meditation are mm -hmm. for you personally and what you experience when you've traveled and, you know, in India, people would call it prayer. Some people call it meditation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are the, are we just like linguistically playing with earth words or is there right. something massively unique when you say those? To, and then also possibly give some tips on what meditation would look like yeah. and how anyone, a lot of us are on our screens, we're at home right now. Yeah. So like maybe sh share, like what would you do to meditate? Because I've heard people say, well, I attempted to just be still and I don't know, I just kept on <laughs> thinking about a bunch of stuff and I had a to-do <clears throat> list and then I just yeah. got up and made myself a sandwich and then I don't know, I can't do it. Or people are like, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. Right. <laughs> yeah. I can't it's meditate. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't meditate because I got things the to thinking. Do. <laughs> I got a monkey mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. I got the chatter. So, yeah. so um, <clears throat> since that's, you know, the answer to number four for you was like the most important thing is meditation. Yeah. So what, what could you unpack for people that are listening to possibly like take it on? Cause now more yeah. than ever, people are probably open and listening more acu uh, acutely than ever before. Yeah. I mean, to me, so much of um, meditation can also, I love, you used the word when you were just talking 
um, but it's like the power of pausing. To me, the, what happens when we slow down long enough. So part of the work that I do as an Ayurvedic lifestyle coach is to help people in a fast paced, modern world. Well, like you said at the beginning, it's like, well, mm -hmm. that, fa that fast pace actually just slowed down and likely our nervous system is still regulated at the other speed. <laughs> yes. It hasn't caught up to the fact that we're like now at home and we're like doing these, you know, physical distancing from, you know, each other, or whatever it is we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Namaste, by the way. Distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, and, you, it's pretty wild that like everyone now, even Prince Charles, think of this, like the British crown is namaste when they were yeah. visiting like wow like what if you know the history of britain and india like just do a little research there and that'll blow your mind about how right. transformation is shifting the planet yeah so but yeah physical distancing exactly yeah and then the to me you know so much of our culture so much so many of us including myself we can just get caught up in like living only from the mode of the mind right and so like the mental domain of who we are isn't our whole it's not all of who we are. So like in the yogi, the yoga perspective is that there are these sort of like five layers of koshas, right? Mm. These sheaths of who we are at our very essence. And those sheaths are anandamaya kosha, which is like the bliss consciousness. And then it's the intuitive body. It's the more higher mind. And then it's the mind. And then it's the breath and energetic body. And then it's the physical body. And what's interesting about all of those, I sort of do it like this, so kind of like Russian dolls, you can sort of imagine them, right? Mm -hmm. Is that each one of them actually has is having their own conversation with Rachel <laughs> <laughs> and influencing the way in which I'm showing up in my life, right? So yeah. So the the layers of who I am are there's multiple dimensions to that. And the what I find is I love to do this thing actually where I I sit and close my eyes and I ask myself in like a third person format of just like, so Rachel's bliss body, how's it going in there? <laughs> I usually go from the physical body down because it's just easier. But oftentimes what happens is it's the, it's the, it's the monomaya kosha. It's the, it's the mind body. So here it's, mm. it's just sort of showing it as the emotional body, but I think of it as the mind mono in, is mind, mm. which is also, you can, you see that in the word mantra. Mm. So mantra it, to me, the translation of the word mantra is a tool for the mind. Tra is tool. Right. So it's like a loom. It's a tool sort of. And the, the man is the root word of manos of of, uh, of the mind. And so we give the we give the, the mind a job <laughs> in a way yeah. in meditation so that we can actually go beyond the mind. And because the mind is the most opinionated, it's the most bossy, it's the one who thinks it knows the, the best thing for you. When we have mm -hmm. problems to solve in our lives and in the world, what do we do? We go to the mind. Yeah, the controller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the da it's filing data all the time. It's saying, wow, this chair is hard and or like whatever. Oh, I'm thirsty. You know, it's like mm -hmm. taking in information all the time. All of these layers of who we are, are doing the same thing, but we don't actually give them the airtime. So to yeah. me, what meditation does is it creates this venue to go with practice to just go beyond the mind and be like, what kind of insight is available to me as me in this moment without needing to do a, whole, a Google search? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Or, or, or what was that one thing I was going to do yesterday? I forgot to text that person back. And yeah. Oh, that text is like 20 texts down. Oh yeah. my gosh, I forgot. And yeah. And yeah, there's all these, I mean, it's a complex world that we've uh, chosen to come into. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. And I think the, like, to me, you know, in the, the year long in body ease program that I lead, I talk about it as the power of the pause. Mm. 
Because really, that. if we can remind ourselves to simply pause and have the mantra even be follow the breath, mm -hmm. follow the life force, right? Then something else changes. Because to me, it's like when we, you have a song called that? <laughs> I I I don't know if you know this, Rachel, oh, but I, oh, I this is so my, great. My last album, like, <gasps> I have a trilogy of albums, and I first album is Radiant Energy, Infinite Energy, which was the seven songs for seven chakras. My most recent project that launched Eleven Eleven in 2019 is called Radiant Energy. Oh my and gosh! I have guess what my songs are. Yes, look at that! I love that. They're all based on the five coaches, and here's yeah. A, photo of me representing awesome. the, the koshas you can see the uh, yeah the layers it's awesome <laughs> and so yeah and i have like amazing talented people yeah that took a whole interpretation of what um cool. manomaya kosh is and ananda yeah. maya kosh and a lot of people have that have taken yoga though ananda means bliss like uh when you're in like you know happy baby pose you know it's like mm -hmm. you, the bliss and we forget to have laughter and joy and giggles and fun and, yeah and then a lot of times as years, you and I both have realized sometimes we're not in our physical selves, like Ananda Maya. And this amazing um, project that I worked on allowed awesome. me to learn and going back to this theme of, I use Eastern instruments, Western instruments. I have singers from different countries, um, but it's bringing in the the Sanskrit and the, the Pranamaya Kosh. And it's really powerful. Beautiful. And it, it's really, as you were saying, with what you're creating, with your practice. And I want to go back to these words um, of resilience, adaptivity, mm -hmm. and ease. Like mm -hmm. that for me is so powerful mm -hmm. because, you know, we get to say like, what is it that we're uneasy about right now? Cause the times yeah. are trying yeah. and how do we um, create a level of ease yeah. in our world? And, and I, I see a quote right now I want to pull up that you have on your website. It says, stress is inevitable in our modern world. How we react to stress takes skill and practice. Ease is dynamic. It comes and goes. So we need strategies to guide us back when we get pulled away from what matters most. Yeah. Wow, that's so relevant right now more than ever. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. So I'd love yeah, to I think speak, that's, speak into oh, that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's part of partly just to link it to the what you know what we were talking about in terms of pausing because I think it's so easy to live outside of what matters most and live into more of the shoulds of life and what we think we should do. It makes me think even of the you know you were talking about dharma and the meaning of dharma and there's this great quote and I'm it's not going to be verbatim but it's from the Bhagavad Gita. And it's like, if you, it's better to perform, it's better to live your own dharma poorly than to live someone else's with great success. Uh, so this piece of like, what is it that I desire most? And this can be, this can be, you know, a, a, an intense conversation for yogis, right? In terms of like classical yoga and even the tantric perspective of like a householder path which is a whole nother conversation to have. But like within that, there really is the tantric, the tantric perspective is like, live in the body, mm. be in your body, all the senses, right? All the parts of you, all the emotion and pulsation of thought and to, and to realize that this body is, is such a gift and this mm -hmm. life is is such a gift absolutely well that leads us to question five like where can people find you online those people that are clear that their body and their life is a gift and they simply are seeking mentoring from you right and embody ease as i can see here from what your questions are is really powerful are you out of integrity with your body sick of your own bs overwhelmed by health trends fads overextending yourself lacking energy you once had in your life right want to be coached mentored by an expert so i'd love for you to share a little bit about your program and i'll, I'll go through your website as you're speaking yeah. 
So um, the Embody Ease program is a is a year long journey essentially through Dinacharya. So we use the foundations of Ayurveda, and Ayurveda essentially means you know on the most basic level, it's the science of everyday living. So we're looking at what we do every day and how what we do every day actually creates our future. So what we're doing now is creating a future. And so the habits that we have really create tomorrow. And so we use 10 overarching thematic habits of Dinacharya, which is the daily rhythm. And so Ayurveda sees daily rhythm in a 24 hour cycle. They see seasonal rhythm, they see monthly rhythm, seasonal rhythm, and then like a rhythm of life, like our, our whole life cycle. And so the Embody Ease program looks at these 10 habits and we go through them season by season. So there's a uh, enrollment for each season. We just started a spring enrollment. We've got another one happening on the summer solstice for summer. And so we look at the habits through the lens of the season and then also our own season phase of life. And so it's really unique to the individuals. So there's a group consciousness and a group connection and dynamic group activity um, related to that. And then there's also um, individual coaching and mentoring. And mm. um, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Shannon, wow. who, you know, just posted earlier, she's part of that. She's part of that group and, and her life has changed considerably in six months. Wow. Right. And so there's like, Let me go here, yeah. Feel it's your really body, deep in yeah. your sleep morning is magic movement is key increase your vitality heal with your hands power of the pause i love it wow <laughs> everything's so connected <laughs> <laughs> i'm grateful for you so of course there's gratitude. gratitude keep your senses easeful living wow yeah, yeah optimal health is a fully embodied sense of well-being excellent so you have a summer course that's coming up because you're in the spring one. Yep. It's wonderful. And you all have cycles. That's what life is, right? It's, we all go through cycles. Our planet is going through a cycle. Yeah. Um, and it looks like you've had a lot of powerful leaders in your community and your atmosphere that have yeah. taken your courses. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, uh, I, um, I just have to also say that, you know, the, the work that I do is so powerful and I, um, I really owe it to even just like stepping into the, to this idea what we were talking about before is, is the level of studentship or adhikara for me is mm -hmm. that I put myself in front of the people who are doing amazing things. Right. And invest yeah. in myself in terms of like really wanting to learn from the people who I see who are modeling the way and to, mm -hmm. and to be in that relationship even with other people. So I work a lot with Kate Stillman at Yoga Healer and Christina Sell. I mentioned her. And so yeah. just to recognize that I stand on the shoulders of amazing, amazing teachers mm -hmm. with a strong lineage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's your website, um, EasefulLivingCommunity.com. Yeah. So anyone that's interested, and this is your Instagram handle. I'm sure a lot of people are on IG. <laughs> 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 yes. And, and did you also have a Facebook group you mentioned for those people? Yeah. That, is it for people in the program or is it for no, anyone? No, it's actually, it's open. It's open to anyone. You just have to, you know, request to join. But um, my business page on Facebook is Rachel Peters Yoga and Easeful Living. And the page is, the gr that small group is Easeful Living Community. Okay. I'll pull I can even post a link. For everyone. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So that's all you have to do if anyone is watching on Facebook. Um, yeah. And now more than ever, I feel... And this is what Himalaya spoke into. She has a, a morning program called Embody mm. Freedom. And oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to be a guest on her show. It's so perfect. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to hang out with her. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, there's an ability for community connection and for mm -hmm. healers to mm -hmm. rise and step yeah. into their leadership. And I want to acknowledge you for being that consistent, resilient, adaptable, and easeful example of what living can be like. Mm. And 
I definitely have been in moments in my life. I had a really powerful guest yesterday, Elia, and he consistently talked about how his big transformation in yoga happened. Um, it's kind of interesting. It had a parallel thing around like just kind of being thrown into teaching. Like, hey, I'm not going to be here. Can you teach a class? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and, and, but he was also speaking about like he had this angst. He had something within him that wasn't in alignment. And as you mentioned, that powerful quote around, you know, why is it better to die in one's own dharma than to live the dharma of another? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's because we want to release that let's say like incongruent aspect of what we're believing the illusion is of what let's call it the um the material world right because yeah. that's what i feel a lot of what we're chasing has come down to is oh i gotta have this thing and that thing and then we're actually in a sense like not listening to the message within like yeah i'm sure you've heard this before too like the way out is to go within mm -hmm. right if you're feeling like oh i got to get out of this situation or i got to get out of like the chatter in my head or or this discomfort or uneaseful living where mm -hmm. i want to get into easeful living mm -hmm. it's the way to get through it is to go within mm -hmm. and now more than ever i feel that the wisdom and the 20 years you've been teaching and the curiosity for other cultures and living that goes way back to when you had, you know, the big family announcement, Hey, we're moving yeah. to Belgium. <laughs> right? yeah. 10 years old. I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> let's go back to, uh, since I'm presencing that time in your life, 10. So then we, uh, we went to the same middle school together mm -hmm. and I promised to you that I would show <laughs> our, so, I, I still have our high school. <clears throat> so, so all you Muscatine Muskies out there. Awesome. So this, is a, <laughs> this is a picture of you. Back I think then. I have the same hairdo. <laughs> You're way ahead of your time. <laughs> there you go. We get that? Do we... Yeah. Yeah. That's little good. Side, little side by side. I know. I should do a. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Back in the day. <laughs> so this was our graduating class. <clears throat> That's awesome. Class. And so I was going through, because I have all these yearbooks, um, and I found this one. Oh, it says A Touch of Gold. For our, oh, yes. The Auroran was the name yes. of our yearbook. <laughs> good old, so this is me singing in choir. Yeah. So La 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 la. Now it's besides <laughs> that is Om Namah Shivaya. Om right. <laughs> Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha. Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha. Yeah. yeah. And so it's really powerful. Um, okay, Shannon, she gave you another blast of, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. of love. And she's your super fan. Yeah. I mean, really, Shannon, it's like Shannon's a perfect example of. Um, you know, we talk about how we each individually have to do the work ourselves, but we mm -hmm. don't have to do it alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah. And now more than ever, um, the planet and our personal connections are, are here. And yeah. we are able to stay connected in so many ways. And today I was on the earth, bare feet, grounding and feeling this just breathing yeah. on the earth and even for that moment being in like a meditative flow state just yeah. being clear that i'm right here right now and that's what i yeah. got i got my breath i, yeah. I have the pause it's so powerful oh my gosh it's and, and i admit like i sometimes have so many hopes and dreams and aspirations and goals and we're in this world now it's all about like let's blow up and let's crush it let's do this and, uh, and you know i want to be an influencer and i want to do this and, and so it, we're always attempting to be everything for everyone mm -hmm. in like our 
upbringing i feel like when you get like it's popularity contest in high school and all of that and i want to do this i want to be the cool kid and and everyone wants to be liked to be liked it's like okay well fall in love with yourself and that's what i love about your message rachel is you know you're able to be connected in gaia and pachumama mother earth and and she spoke to you and told you like this is this reflection i am you you are me we're here and for you to then you know, as I think Steve Jobs says, like you never really understand the meaning or the purpose or the legacy you're going to leave in life. And, and you can't always connect the dots while you're in the video game of your own life. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now there's a pause. So we get to re reflect yeah. and how wonderful that we get to um, share. And for you and I to really haven't seen each other since high school to like be connected in this glorious global yoga community absolutely there's so much like love and just like <laughs> heart-centered souls and I, I really love how you're speaking into the heart and and the the gift and glory of you know yes recognizing we have a mind recognizing like thank you brain for being in my skull <laughs> i appreciate you and you're not running the show yeah. <laughs> like i want to be a heart led and you were saying one thing you've been doing is just like yeah like in my meditations even just like set the intention and just like yeah <laughs> that's amazing uh, uh well thank you do you have thank any you closing words or anything you'd like to share i mean really <clears throat> you know one of the things dave that uh i just feel so grateful for in terms of the the whole I don't know the I, this seat of privilege. I feel like I sit in, in regards to just even um, having these kinds of conversations. So thank you for holding the space for a conversation that has depth and expansion. Mm. I yeah, it's, it. a, it's an honor to um, you know as I share with people that ask me about you know the trilogy of albums I made for yoga and breath work meditation. It's like how'd you get into this? Like, well, I happen to be a musician that mm -hmm. was transformed touch moved and inspired so profoundly in my asana practice and then mm -hmm. connecting with a global community of just powerful souls that there was so much depth in like the layers as you were talking about the koshas right mm -hmm. and then to go into that and to then say all right how am I able to contribute? How am I able yeah. to share? And for you, how are you able to teach? And then the yeah. wisdom that you get to share with your family is really powerful. And as a mother to bring yoga, <laughs> you know, so do you like family yoga sessions? Yeah, we do. Um, sometimes, you know, um, recently, just in the last week, really, you know, with school canceled and stuff, my I have a home yoga studio, and it's turned into home yoga studio slash basketball court for my five year old. <laughs> just fine. That's, awesome. That's, <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I could show you where I'm at, like, I have a, like, we renovated our whole living room to like a production studio. Yeah. Because I'm ramping up the 5Q interview series. Uh, yeah. Which, if anyone's watching now, or if anyone you know, Rachel, that you feel would like to be on this series of interviews, I'd love to continually share and you know yeah. expand what's the nectar, the goodness, the as you said, the the seed of possibilities that we all are within us. It's so relevant now more than ever to create that interconnectedness and to you know for me like bridge a pathway to. Yeah to like what's in it like we can see this i feel as okay it's the end of the world okay what's the song that was popular when we were in high school it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel fine so are you gonna feel easeful are you gonna feel in a frenzy are you gonna feel you know disturbed are you gonna feel and you know just do a cursory research about what stress can do to the body and i think you'll do your best to be like okay i don't want to go there i can't stress for the benefit of yourself your family your well-being your future self and just just for your own like overall like ability to serve the world right we're all here in service and yeah. if you're stopped if you're not taking care of yourself then 
you're not going to have that energy. And that's what I love about the programs you offer. And so you're going to begin live streaming some yoga classes. Um, yeah, we're doing some yoga classes. And then I'm also doing some workshops really on mm -hmm. sort of living within the, the daily rhythm of Ayurveda and, and really looking at how to move and navigate really stress and move mm -hmm. towards ease. So we'll be, we'll be doing that in the, in the Facebook group. Okay. That's, I love that. I'd love for people to join me and us. I mean, it's a big community of people. And I also, uh, you know, I send out an email every week. So if you get on my website, you know, um, you're welcome, whoever you are to, to join. <laughs> I send Perfect. out a lot of content, right. Related to, to mm. useful living and just the tips, a lot of different tips sheets and, mm. um, resources really for the, for the time, for the season. Mm -hmm. for That's wonderful. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And so if anyone's interested in your mentorship programs, they could just go to your website, DM you. Yeah. However, right. Totally. Then, you can even tag me, you know, if you're on Facebook right now, awesome. you can tag me. I'd be happy to connect. Wonderful. Well, I want to acknowledge you for being a leader, for being someone that is resilient and adaptable and easeful during these times more than ever. I feel it's really powerful to own those qualities and those characteristics. And I think, you know, we were sharing before we got live, like, like we've been in training, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we thought we we're, the idea was, oh, we're in just like yoga teacher training, or you got flung into the opportunity to teach 20 years ago, or, you know, I've been like creating and traveling and festivals and all these things and witnessing the power and the gift and the, beauty of just truly just human connection and awakening and it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be under the umbrella of whatever terminology you want to use it's really just being here being here now and recognizing that we're in the classroom of life and that your mentorship Rachel is powerful and that anyone that would be interested to work with you I highly encourage it um and as many testimonials that came up on your website and people that commented um, <laughs> here. Oh, uh, here's Diana. Oh, nice. Love you, Diana. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, what I'll do too is if anyone is interested to be featured, or if they're interested in um, listening to my music. And because you brought up the koshas. Yeah, I can't um, wait. Oh my gosh. And so I'm a part of Buddha Music Group. I'm the marketing director and artist. And what our intention is, is raising the vibrations of the planet through art and music. And I have programs that will inspire anyone that's listening to make music for meditation and yoga. And that's what I was going to be doing at the Sedona Yoga Festival right. before the governor of Arizona um, at that time, you know, had a state of emergency and big love and shout out to Heather and Mark, the organizers. And I know that they've had to do some massive shifts and there's yeah. the postponing it. And I know Rachel, you and I were looking forward to see each other uh, in person at the event. And here we are virtually being able to stay connected. So I really appreciate your presence. Um, and what I want to do, because you brought up the coaches is I will play a song oh, yeah. from yeah. yeah, and and with one of my songs great. that is really, you know, which, how about you pick one of the koshas? Let's go with the Vigyana Maya Kosha, the wisdom. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. 